Welcome back to Bitcoin Advisors. My name is Chris Mitchell, bringing this video to you Friday morning from Wessex Village, California, where it is going to be beautiful and sunny and probably about 80 degrees today. So I'm hoping to get out a little bit early today. But um, let's jump right into the price action charts today. As we did say yesterday, very, very likely to get a bounce off this white 200 simple day moving average, holding the line here at 46,000. Um, as long as we are continuing to make higher lows here and holding above 46, I would expect uh, Bitcoin likely continues to be upside over the weekend. Now, if we do get a daily or 12 hour closure below 46,000, I'll be looking for a move down to about 42, 42,300 in that range and probably picks itself up from there. I wouldn't mind that at all. Um, and so what am I looking for? That's on the daily time frame. If we look on the, uh, the four hour time frame, uh, we did have a trend reversal. So we're getting lower highs and lower lows. And so what I'm looking for right now is a uh, lower high watch here. And um, looking for any divergences here that we may see on the RSI. So you got what is bullish divergence? Price is making lower lows and RSI is making higher lows. So uh, do we see any of that right now? Well, price is making lower lows. No. Bearish divergence, price making higher high, RSI making lower highs. Uh, do we have any of that going on here? Maybe right here. Look, so one, two, all right. Price is making higher highs. Well, I, RSI is making lower highs. So do we have a higher high here? There's a higher high. There's a higher. No, I, I think that's a little too far back in the look back period. Um, what else did I want to talk about today? Um, you know, really is the fact that Bitcoin has become this apex property of the human race. So for the first time in history, we created a uh, an opportunity, thanks to Biden and Yellen and all his cronies at the U.S. Um, you know, the U.S. Treasury, right? The inflation rate just tripled. So cash, if you have cash right now, you're probably losing one to four percent a month. So you got to invest it somewhere, right? And the big tech trade, like Tesla, Amazon, and Facebook. It's all crowded, right? They've gone almost 5, 10x over the past few years, but Bitcoin is digital gold on a big tech monetary network. And what does that really mean is that, you know, you should be buying as much as possible before everybody else finds out. Because this thing's going to grow, it's going to grow by a factor of 100. And, you know, there's something cruel and tasteless about Biden printing trillions of dollars, giving it to the banks and all the people, you know, all the people uh, that aren't working, right? They just want to sit at their home and watch Netflix and eat GMO food and go along with the Biden plan. Um, I think it's really, um, we know there was election fraud and the dollar is being devalued at the fastest pace in history. So again, you want to put your hard-earned savings somewhere other than cash, right? And property or real estate is one option, but Bitcoin is property rights for billions of people. Let me explain what I mean. So for the first time in human history, we can grant property rights to 8 billion people, right? The light bulb should be going off. Anybody on planet Earth who wants to own some property, you have a choice, right? You can buy land, but somebody can tax it and take it away from you. You can buy gold, but somebody can take it away from you. You can buy stocks, but you can't take possession. You can buy debt, but you can't take possession of it. You can buy jewelry, but somebody can take it away. Bitcoin is now the apex property of the human race. So for the first time we figured out how to create true property value you can take possession of with full custodial rights that's least likely to be impaired and the most mobile. So Bitcoin is savings technology. When you compare it to any other asset, it is truly 
the seminal invention of the human race. So for the first time in human history, we can grant property rights to 8 billion people. I think that's pretty cool. Plus, it's a monetary policy that's predictable in the future. There will only ever be 21 million Bitcoins. So Mr. or Mrs. Smith, if you're out there, when the future first arrives, it, we often don't recognize it. Automobiles, computers, cell phones, email, they're all great examples. People don't like change, but with Biden in office, you have to do something to get ahead of what is coming, right? A digital US dollar and a complete obliteration of the middle class. And so you wonder, you know, some CEOs and academics and economists look at Bitcoin and they're emboldened by it, right? They develop, uh, or they see the future in it. You know, they, they see the uh, possibilities it presents. But other CEOs and academics and economists, they look at it, they become intimidated by it, they develop, you know, Bitcoin derangement syndrome, right? It's almost like they get scared of it and they feel threatened by it. So I don't know where you think you fit in, but, um, you know, there's a way to kind of explain this phenomenon. Some billionaires embrace Bitcoin, others demonize it. And... Here's what I here, here's how I'd explain that kind of contradiction, right? Um, if you've got plenty of wealth and you're comfortable with the status quo, then it's within your best interest to assume things are going to continue the way they have before, right? These people can't imagine change to their physical circumstances or their environment. So if the ship is sinking, and the ship I'm talking about is fiat currency or paper money you know the ship is sinking, right? Then you become enamored with whatever the lifeboat is. But if you don't know the ship is sinking and you have a luxury cabin, right? And you're sitting at the top of the ship, somebody comes knocking on the door and says, hey, you better run out and jump in the water, right? You just look at it as a nagging problem, right? So to appreciate Bitcoin, you have to put some work in. You also have to have motivation. So to anybody who criticizes Bitcoin, I'd say, what is your solution? to the people in Argentina whose currency is just, you know, the peso, the Argentina peso in the year 2000, it was three pesos to a dollar. Now, it's 100 pesos to a dollar. So, when you're sitting in your comfy American house drinking a martini, uh, you know, uh, at a bar in Manhattan, or, you know, you're sitting in Beverly Hills or Santa Monica and, you know, somewhere that is luxury lifestyle, right? You criticize Bitcoin, let me ask you, what do you say to people in Africa or South America or Asia? What's your solution to them, right? Bitcoin critics, they all seem to fall into one category. They criticize something that they don't understand because it is new. Now, I've never seen a Bitcoin critic say, I hate Bitcoin, and I think people should buy Apple stock to save their life savings in Africa to avoid having it being stolen by the local government. So here's the case for Bitcoin going up 10 times for, from where we're at today. The global money supply is about $1.2 quadrillion. That includes cash, CDs, money markets, checking accounts, institutional money, the U.S., Chinese, European stock market, 1.2 quadrillion. I don't even know what that number, how many zeros there are in the end of that, but let's say 1% of that money decides to diversify into Bitcoin. If you just take 1% of you know, 1.2 quadrillion dollars, divide that by 21 million Bitcoins available, the price of one Bitcoin goes to $480,000. Keep in mind that Bitcoin has already exceeded a trillion dollar market cap multiple times. Bitcoin actually reached a trillion dollar mar market cap faster than Apple, Microsoft, and Google. Just imagine if you bought Microsoft when it first came out. So Bloomberg estimates there are about 150 million active users of Bitcoin today. That number is projected to go to a billion people over the next 
two to three years. Actually, what is it? Yeah, we go to a billion people in about three years. So my top recommendation, if you haven't already taken a toe tester, start with something comfortable, track the investment for six to nine months, use that as a barometer for future participation. I don't think anybody can afford to miss out on this opportunity, and that's why I'm bringing you these videos. And that's, you know, one of the famous, famous sayings, you know, and, and, and why we trade based off a of technical analysis is, look, if I can help one person from going broke, just one, from following a trade checklist, the world's probably going to be a better place because losing all your money is not fun at all. And that's what I do, right? My professional recommendation is come up with a plan, come up with a strategy, start with something small, whatever that is for you. Whatever you can invest and afford to lose completely, start there. And then, if you like what you see, you can always do more business. Be sure you click on the link, subscribe, follow, and have yourself a blessed day. Take care.